question nine is the last of your calculus questions, but it is a maximization problem. So let's just jump right into it. It says that a cone with radius r centimeters and height ab is inscribed in a sphere with center O and radius of eight centimeters. Also, they give us that OB is equal to X. So if we look over here, before we even start with the questions, guys, I'm going to do the sphere in yellow and the cone in green. Okay, so this sphere with center O, we know that this radius over here is eight centimeters. But also, guys, if you look here from the center to the circumference, it's another radius of eight centimeters. Okay, so remember, bear that in mind, this is just a big old circle with the same radius all over it. So, if we look over here, it says calculate the volume of the sphere. So we know that V sphere, because it was nicely given to us, is, let me double check, four over three pi r cubed. Okay. And it was given to us that the radius of the sphere is eight. Okay, so if we plug that into our calculator, we get four divided by three times pi times eight cubed. And that is going to give us 2048 pi over three. Okay, easy peasy. That's just an expression for the volume of the sphere. So now it says show that r squared, remember r is part of the cone. So r squared is 64 minus x squared. So if you look over here in this cone, r is the distance we're trying to find. And x sits over there. So it sits in this lovely little right angle triangle with the hypotenuse being eight, the other side being x. So in that triangle, r squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared minus the other side squared. And that is because of Pythagoras. So r squared is equal to 64 minus x squared. Easy peasy. Now here where it becomes a little bit challenging. 9.3 says determine the ratio between the largest volume of this cone and the volume of the sphere. Okay. So we have an expression for the sphere. Remember, it was 2048 over 3 pi. Let me just double check that. Yep. And the largest volume of the cone. Guys, how do you maximize something? First, you find an expression. So we're going to have to find an expression for the volume of the cone. But then to get the largest, we're going to have to derive this expression because remember if you have a function that does this and you're trying to find the volume right, volume right at the top there you're going to take the first derivative which gives us the gradient and you're going to make it equal to zero okay so here we're going to have to find dv dx and make it equal to zero so first let's find an expression for the volume of the cone v cone is equal to a third pi r squared h. Okay, now remember, we found an expression for r squared. Say that r squared is equal to 64 minus x squared. And h was given to us as this entire length over here in the cone, which is x plus 8. Okay, so that is h. So the volume of the cone is equal to pi over 3 multiplied by r squared, we said was 64 minus x squared. And h, we said was x plus 8. Okay, so now we simply multiply it out. So I'm going to leave the pi over 3 out of the brackets for now. 64, I'm going to start with the constant. So 64 multiplied by 8 is a real big number. So I'm going to use the calculator. 64 times 8 is 512 and 64 multiplied by x is 64x. Then we say minus x squared. Okay, first I'm going to start with the constant. So I'm going to say minus x squared multiplied by 8 is minus 8x squared and minus x squared multiplied by x is minus x cubed. Okay, 
So now that we have that expression, we can multiply the pi over 3 into the bracket. So we're going to get 512 pi all over 3 plus 64 pi over 3. But remember, there's an x there. Okay. The reason I'm writing it like this is this whole expression here is a number. Remember, pi is 3, 1, 4, etc., etc. So this all here represents a whole number, and that's all just a, a number, and that is the coefficient of x. Okay, so I'm going to take that away because it's a bit of a mess. The next one is minus 8 pi over 3 x squared, and the last one is minus x cubed. Okay, actually, let me just say pi over 3 first. Pi over 3 x cubed. Okay. So that was the volume of the cone. Now remember, we are looking for the largest, so we need to differentiate. So dv, because we're differentiating of the volume in terms of x dx, is equal to, now if you look here, guys, you've got an x to the power of 0 there. The, co the exponent on this x there is a 1. Okay. So remember, when you differentiate, you multiply the entire thing by the exponent. So if I multiply this entire thing by zero, I'm going to get zero. Okay, so we move on to the next term. We get 64 pi over three. And if I subtract one from this exponent, I get x to the negative or x to the zero, which gives us one. So there's no x in that um, term. It's just that constant. So the next term, we take the exponent and we multiply the whole thing by it. So we're going to get 16 pi over 3 x. And if I subtract 1 from the 2, I get x to the power of 1. And lastly, we say 3 pi over 3 x squared. OK. And I'm not going to cancel these two out here because if you notice, all of these terms have the same denominator. So I'm going to leave that uh, fraction over there for now. OK. So, now that we've differentiated, remember, to maximize, we make this whole thing equal to 0. So 64 pi over 3 minus 16 pi over 3x minus 3 pi over 3x squared is equal to 0. Okay, so now, if I look at these terms, is there a common factor to all of them? Yes, there is. There is a pi over 3 in all of these terms. So if I take out that pi over 3, I get 64 minus 16x oopsie, minus 3x squared, and that's all equal to 0. So now, if I multiply both sides by pi over 3, those two are going to cancel each other out, and 0 times pi over 3 is still 0. So I get 64 minus 16x minus 3x squared is equal to 0. Okay, so now I'm going to write it in standard form just so that I can factorize it nicely. So we get negative 3x squared minus 16x plus 64 is equal to 0. Now I don't know about you, but I'm not going to try and find factor brackets because these are a little bit scary, so I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So I get x is equal to minus b. Remember, this is a, this is b, and this is c, but it's the whole thing, hey, plus the sign. Okay, so x is equal to minus b, which is positive 16, plus or minus b squared, minus 4 multiplied by a, multiplied by c, all square rooted over 2 multiplied by a. Okay, that is going to give us, you stick it in your calculator, 16, let me double check the sign, yeah, plus negative 16 squared minus 4 times negative 3 times 64 all over 2 times negative 3 and we get negative 8. So that's one. But remember, there's another one because here there is a plus and a minus. So we go back to our calculator. We go and delete that plus, put in a minus, 
and we get 8 over 3. Now, how do you choose which one of these best suits x? Well, remember guys, x here is a distance. So x can't really be negative, can it? x can only really be positive. So over here, we can't use this equation over there. We're going to have to use x is equal to 8 over 3. Okay, so now we take this, x is equal to 8 over 3, and we substitute it back into our original expression for the volume <coughs> excuse me, of the cone. Okay, so remember, this here is our volume of the cone. So, if we take 8 over 3 and we put it into every one of these x's, okay, we're going to use the calculator. So, the volume of the cone, remember, is pi over 3 multiplied by 512 plus 64 times 8 over 3 minus 8 times 8 over 3 squared minus 8 over 3 um, cubed. Remember to close your entire bracket and you're going to get this whole horrible expression, 635.45. Or, guys, what I'm even going to do, I'm not even going to use that horrible expression. Remember, V cone is this one here. So I'm going to put 8 over 3 into that expression. Well, not even that one, this one. 8 over 3 into that expression. Okay, so the volume of the cone equal to pi over 3 into 64 minus 8 over 3 squared multiplied by 8 over 3 plus 8. Okay, so now let's put that expression in rather. We should get a bit of a neater number. So we have pi over 3 into 64 minus 8 over 3 squared into 8 over 3 plus 8. Oh, we still get 635,45. So 635,45. Okay, so let's put this down at the bottom here. Okay, so that is very important. And remember, they asked us for the ratio. They asked us for V cone over V sphere. So if I take away that line, V cone divided by V sphere is going to give us that number divided by, we found that the V sphere was, I think it was 2048 pi over 3. Yeah, it is. 2048 pi divided by 3. And that is going to give us this answer divided by 2048 pi all over 3. And that's going to give us 8 over 27. Okay, so after all of this, guys, that is what the ratio is between the largest volume of the cone and the volume of the sphere. Always be a bit relieved, guys, when you come across this lovely fraction and not a horrible decimal, okay? So, guys, just a tip and trick for maximization problems. Whenever they say the largest volume or the largest surface area or the largest, always find an expression for whatever you're looking for, volume, surface area, whatever, First derivative, that's how you find the largest. First derivative equal to zero, and that's how you find the x values that give you that largest volume. That's just solving for the x values. Then you plug the x values into the volume, and that is going to give you the largest volume. Okay, so after all of this, that is the end of question nine.